This is part two of the screencast covering this PowerPoint presentation on the history of collisions and their importance in particle physics throughout the 20th century and now into the 21st century. At the end of the Second World War, the Allies basically had won the war because of an enormous strategic advantage that was attained from physics research. The two inventions that basically won the war for the Allies were radar and atomic weapons. So after the Second World War, the Allied nations and a few other nations around the world, the Soviet Union and China, for example, started to invest very heavily in pure physics research. So compare the cyclotron here that was first invented by Lawrence that fit into the palm of his hand to this cyclotron here. This cyclotron here was called the Bevatron. The BEV stands for billions of electron volts. An electron volt is a metric SI unit that is describing the energies associated with subatomic particles. This was built just after the Second World War at the University of California at Berkeley. This machine and a couple of others like it at different laboratories around the world were important in the development of what is called the standard model of particle physics, which took place over decades between the 1940s and the 1970s. The Bevatron, by the way, no longer exists. It was disassembled back in the 1990s. Okay, now what is the standard model of particle physics? Well, physics today here in the early 21st century is basically two things. Number one, there is what is called general relativity, which is our current understanding of gravity. General relativity perfectly describes the universe at the largest of scales. It describes, for example, what happens when planets orbit the sun. It describes what happens as galaxies rotate. It even describes the expansion of the universe itself. But then sitting alongside general relativity is our understanding of the other three fundamental forces that exist in nature, the forces that exist at the smallest of scales. They are the force of electromagnetism and the two types of nuclear forces, the weak nuclear force and the strong nuclear force. Collision experiments, the experiments conducted in enormous accelerators, for example, basically are used to study the particles that emerge during those collisions and how those particles interact with each other that's then what we see as those three fundamental forces. The particles themselves that emerge in these experiments are grouped into various mathematical categories. You can see those here, for example, depicted on this slide. The standard model of particle physics is an extremely successful theory. It successfully explains these three fundamental forces at the smallest of scales, and it also successfully explains the history of the universe back to a point of just 10 to the minus 43 seconds after the Big Bang itself. I will describe a number of these topics in much greater detail as we get towards the topics that occur in class at the end of the year. Okay, next, let me go ahead and show you some photographs here of some of the largest accelerators currently in operation in the world. This right here is the largest linear accelerator in the world. It's housed at the Stanford University in Northern California. It's called the SLAC for rather obvious reasons. This is basically a descendant, if you will, of Rutherford's original experiment. The actual tunnel itself that the charged particles are accelerated along is like so in this aerial photograph, and it's just over two miles long. This type of an experimental design is useful in colliding particles into very heavy nuclei, heavy stationary targets. Okay, the United States Department of Energy also runs a couple of laboratories around the United States where physics research occurs. This is at one of those laboratories located in Brookhaven, Massachusetts. This particular experimental design is called the RIC for a rather obvious reason. It uses a combination of linear and cyclotron designs to do specific types of experiments. Okay, next, this right here is the largest cyclotron that's been built in the United States. This machine is called the Tevatron. The TEV stands for trillions of electron volts. So it's basically a thousand times more powerful than the old Bevatron. It's housed at a laboratory outside of Chicago called Fermilab. The main accelerator ring is right here. It is four miles in circumference. Here's a photograph of the actual beam pipe itself underground. And then here above and below, these are colored magnets, which are then used to steer the beam pipe around along a circular track. The Tevatron and another machine like it at a place called CERN, which is on the border between France and Switzerland. That machine was called the LEP, which stands for the Large Electron Positron Collider. Those two machines basically were able to be maxed out. In other words, they were pushed as far as they can go to discover the remains of the standard model of particle physics that was yet to be discovered. 
Basically, all of this occurred in the late 1980s and the early 1990s. Those machines are no longer useful in the sense that they can't be used to discover any physics beyond the standard model of particle physics. So at that point, a decision had to be made. What was going to be the next generation of particle physics experiments, perhaps leading to new physics beyond the standard model? The United States decided to build what was to be called the SSC, which stands for Superconducting Super Collider. Construction started in the plains of Texas in the early 1990s. The main accelerator ring was going to be over 50 miles in circumference. Unfortunately, when all this happened, there was a pretty bad economic recession that was going on and cost overruns began to occur. So basically, because the project was becoming much more expensive than when it was originally envisioned, unfortunately, Congress killed the project. So the American physics community was faced with a dilemma. What do we do now? Well, a decision was made by the United States and by the countries in Europe to pool their resources. The old LEP at CERN at the border of France and Switzerland was decommissioned and removed. And then in its place, what was to be constructed is the Large Hadron Collider, which was much more powerful than the Tevatron and the old LEP. Construction began in the mid-1990s. It was completed about 15 years later. Okay, this is an aerial photograph of CERN. CERN is located in Geneva, Switzerland, which is right on the border between France and Switzerland. Okay, the main accelerator ring, as you can see right here in this photograph, is 27 kilometers in circumference. This machine is much more powerful than the old LEP and also much more powerful than the Tevatron. The LHC is the most complicated machine that has ever been built. Once again, the main accelerator ring is 27 kilometers in circumference. The internet, by the way, was actually created first at CERN in the early 1970s. The internet was basically built originally for two reasons. Number one, it was built as a computer network by the United States Department of Defense, basically building a computer network that could survive a nuclear war. And then the second reason why the internet was built, because at CERN, when they were doing experiments with the old LEP, the physics community wanted to take the data from those experiments and then send the data out to various universities around the world. These were the original two reasons why the Internet was built. Okay, here's a photograph of the tunnel underground at CERN. This is basically the Large Hadron Collider right here. The particles themselves are steered around the circular track by magnets. You can see the magnets here in blue. The actual beam of particles is less than the width of a human hair and it ultimately reaches speeds greater than 99% the speed of light. Okay, now operating at its highest possible energies, basically at full strength, the energies being reached right now are far above any of those that have been previously attained. New experimental results from the experiments currently being conducted at the LHC are expected soon. Okay, now the actual collisions themselves take place at four different sites scattered around the main accelerator ring. The collisions themselves take place in these enormous machines referred to as detectors. There are four of them scattered around the ring. This enormous coil of wire that you see right here is called the compact muon solenoid. And basically what the wire does here, if you will, is it tracks the particles, all the debris that gets sprayed out during the collisions themselves. UCLA, for example, is actually very heavily involved in the operation of the experiments that are conducted at the compact muon solenoid. Okay, this right here is not really a photograph per se of a collision, it's just a reproduction afterwards, but you have the incoming beams of particles here and here, and they then collide together in one of these detectors. And then all of this stuff that you see right here, all of this stuff that you see right here are the various particles that were described earlier, within the standard model of particle physics. And then you use essentially a combination of the conservation of momentum and energy to then mathematically sort out exactly what happened in the collision. Okay, here's another photograph of one of the detectors at CERN. This is called the ATLAS detector. The word ATLAS is an acronym for something. Each individual detector costs well over a billion dollars to construct and billions of dollars overall has been invested in the LHC by a combination of different countries and universities around the world. This is truly a worldwide endeavor. With the failure of funding for the SSC in the United States in the early 1990s, 
basically what we realize is that doing physics on this kind of a scale is pretty far above and beyond the ability of a single country to do. Okay, let me pause right here and conclude this as part two of this screencast. There will be one more part to follow.